Oswald was fairly bright. And then as, uh, as people collect the DVDs, they'll see that I become increasingly stupid until there's a point where I just thought, why did anybody give this guy a license? Can I drive one of those little cars on the parade? <laughs> I really didn't have a character. Really I basically just did myself. You ended up having a character. Not the first year, but you ended up having... He was like a I real... I was creepy. Yeah, yeah you are a creep. Was, yeah. yeah. I'd be happy to help you. I'm Kate O'Brien. <laughs> and by the way, let me tell you what a pleasure it is to meet a fellow businesswoman. Someone who's broken through the glass ceiling and showered the rest of us with the pointy shards of her success. <laughs> Can you see me? But I was the stupid one, and you were the smart one. That's true. Yeah. And then and we, we switched reversed. it. Totally yeah. switched it around. I want in on this. What kind of drugs are they testing? Smart drugs. They got drugs that make you smarter? What do they do? <laughs> There's a fine line between stupid and crazy, though. Uh, I've never found it, but it's there. I could take them. Does anyone doubt I could take them? No. 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 <laughs> All right. Couldn't have a show without a sitcom without a chick. Right, so we came up with the idea of Kate, who was someone that, because we both, in both of our lives, we had women who we had like these long crushes on who were like friends and didn't see us as anything different than just friends, but we were always like, oh God, I love her. So we came up with the idea of Kate. I went from the first audition to three more rehearsals to the network test in the same outfit, which was brown boots, brown corduroys, and a pink long sleeve t-shirt. Actors get um, superstitious about um, you go in for a meeting, and if they ca call you back, you feel like part of it's the outfit. The producers must have been really tired of seeing that outfit. I just like found that outfit and it stuck with it. I had just done um, an episode of Seinfeld, and when I went to do the network test at ABC, I think they were nervous that I was too green. And so I thought, oh, let me see if I can get the Seinfeld tape. They were waiting to see before they'd accept Krista, they wanted to see a tape of her Seinfeld. She had done one Seinfeld. Yeah, because we like, she didn't have like, a lot of experience. Oh my experience. God, I hope they love it. I hope she did good. We never seen she it. She had to call up Larry David or something like and that, or the, one of the writers, like personally. And if I see Larry David now, he always says, I made her career, because he did. I said, Larry, can I just take the rough cut and I'll bring it right back? And it was when Seinfeld was so huge, they weren't letting the tapes out. And he said, okay. And she had to drive in like five o'clock traffic or something to personally get it from there, from the office, and drive it over to deliver it to us, and she, like in a panic. I ran over to ABC, and um, I was just so strung out, and handed it, like broadcast news, just like, here's the tape. And then Bruce Halford called me up and said, you got it. She and she was really the only person really right for the role. She, because yeah. she's a tomboy, and she looked like the kind of person who would fit in with these three guys. Yeah, she would actually really, want to hang she out really was a with, with three guys. Um, and attractive. Come on, guys, let's give Drew some space. We'll go down to the Warsaw. I'll explain a little something to Lewis. I told you women don't think those things are sexy. She was one of the guys and friends with all these guys and sarcastic and always getting in trouble for being mean. And um, not, not so much mean, but like putting her foot in her mouth and saying the wrong thing and um, yelling at people. So that is fun to do. No need to respond. Just ignore her. Let it go. Oh, and you must be the trash that got the job. Don't get up. I don't want to see where his hand is. <laughs> get her! There was a little bit weir of weirdness in the first season because it was like, like there was this like the four regulars and then Kathy was like this extra added on one. She became a regular and then we realized that she was completely a member of the family. Hey, Drew. And Mimi. <laughs> ah, we came by to see if you wanted to go out drinking, but obviously you both have already been. <laughs> but in the beginning, we gave her a character to really play, and also her approach, when she once said this to me, and I totally got it, was that she played Mimi as a spoiled child. I totally understood exactly everything she was doing from that point. I understood her character better when she told me what she was doing than when I was writing it. Whoops. <laughs> Talking about your butt. <laughs> Anyone ever mistake you for a woman? I'll have you know that men find me. Yeah, I me. know. They find you with the lights out, or they find you at last call, or they find you blocking the view of the woman they want to hit on. 
No, you're really on today. I'll come back later. <laughs> Kate was so deep. It was like everything in her life she wanted to take on anybody, she took on Drew Carey. That's it. They're both nine years old. The, this is the way they live their lives. He thinks he doesn't, but they're very immature and they're really just children and it's about finding the child inside. All this stuff is just like, it's just very unprofessional. Don't touch the troll! <laughs> Is that what your mom used to say to your dates? I found this picture of a woman in a, in a uh, high school yearbook, yearbook yeah. and she was an art teacher. <laughs> and she had like bizarre makeup and this huge cat with the tassels and everything else. And said, this is Mimi, this is it, right? I think of makeup as my palette and my face as my canvas. Julie Ryan was our costume designer who worked on the pilot and continued through the life of the show who came up with the Mimi costumes each week. I enjoyed the, the clothing. They were like costumes. They always referred to me like a clown. You know, she's like, she could join the circus. One of my favorite things to do when I took people on a tour of the Drew Carey stage was to bring them into wardrobe because you would see these floor-to-ceiling racks that were right in front and they were just filled with these colorful creations for Mimi. It looked like someone had vomited up a rainbow. It was just whoosh all over the wall. It was shocking. I would kind of hide and I wouldn't let anyone see me and then I'd come out. <laughs> The sun go down on me. One of the characters who wasn't a regular but was around a lot on the first season, especially, was Katie Silverstone. Oh, look at that. Your whole head is blushing. That's so cute. <laughs> when, we, when we first went on the air, here we had a pilot about a guy with a bunch of guy friends, one tomboy girlfriend, and one crazy woman. And so Drew has that general likability for women, but they were worried it wasn't enough. So we thought we better get somebody in there who a girlfriend for him, so there's a little bit of a love interest that, that will make him shine clearly in the eyes of women because if this woman adores him, how great must he be? The beginning of our relationship and the way they, the way Bruce Helford and the other writers set up the problems for us were like we weren't allowed to date but we were attracted to each other. Isn't there any way we could see each other? I'm a director of personnel. It'll look like I'm playing favorites. If I date you, I'll have to date everybody. <laughs> It became fun, and also it became fun, like, me getting to pursue him. They wrote her so that she goes after what she wants, but it's not um, sort of antagonistic or aggressive. She's obviously uh, taken a shine to him. It doesn't happen to her often enough so that she's going to let it go by. I had a dream about you last night. I had a dream about you last night. You were on fire, and I put you out with a big hose. <laughs> I think the Drew Carey Show was one of those shows that you could come home and watch after you worked a long, hard day, and it was funny, and it could distract you, but it was clever. Oh, yeah, she wants some Drew Carey bad. <laughs> a lot of people tell me, they are fans of the show, that we obviously had chemistry as a cast, and I think that's what people really, you know, dig. You could feel with the Drew Carey Show what was going on behind the scenes when you watched the actors having a good time. Bite me. Bite me, doughboy. Bite me, jackass. I think that still just says it all, don't you? I was happy to be a part of it. I never thought anything of, of it except it was a fun sitcom and we just wanted to have laughs. <laughs> Moon over, I'll bring my love to me tonight. Guide her to Cleveland underneath your silvery light. We're going bowling, so don't lose her in Solon. Moon over, Parma.